Okay, um, is Regina here? I, cause, okay, Regina is supposed to be the first speaker um, out of six, but I don't know if she ended up coming. If not, then I guess we'll have to start off with Erica. Sorry, I told you earlier that you were going second, but. <laughs> okay. Um, well, do I have to like go into a breakout room or are we just. Doing... No, the speeches are in the main room. They're in here. Okay. Okay. Um... So, okay, in case some of you didn't see my email uh the order is well it was regina erica frank Teresa, yuming alex since regina isn't here erica will go first i think the rest of you guys are here um i'll just check in but whenever you're ready you can start uh and along with douglas Can you go ahead and type that order in chat for me, just so I know for a reference? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, we will go ahead and begin with Erica whenever you are ready. Judge, I want to give you a few words before I start this speech. This speech is very important to my friends, family, and community, and also is personal to me. For the past week, I took a survey to my school to see what would they do in a situation of a hate crime. I asked 100 random people, children, and adults, and the results were surprising but understood. Imagine seeing your best friend, specifically an Asian, being beat up by crowds simply because they're Asian. Imagine being an Asian and seeing a parent or grandparent figure in your life being stomped on by a stranger simply because they're Asian. Imagine being the person being beat up 
In the crowd, they're filming. They yell at each other to help, but what do they do? Nothing. They shut you out, close you off, and pretend not to know you. They make you feel like a thing, a trend on the internet. Normal TV did a social experiment to see how many people would walk by or take action when they saw a kid being beat up on the streets. And the amount of people that walked by, a shocking 35% ignored it. Shut them out, closed their ears to the staged cries of the little boy being so-called mugged. Of course, they didn't know that it was being acted out, but still, 35%. 35%. More than a third of them walked by, pretending not to notice. Oh, they knew. It was super loud, and there was no way that you couldn't hear the boy. It's shocking. You should be surprised, but you shouldn't. We, as a species, are selfish. I asked a hundred random people, children and adults, if they would help a person being beat up on the streets. 51 of them said yes. But then, I changed the wording. Would they physically intervene in the beating? This time, 72 of them said no. It's not our fault. It's our instincts to survive. Your little voice in the back of your head whispered, Hey, that's probably going to get you injured or killed. Don't intervene. Don't do it. And since that little voice has been your guide for the past however many years you've been alive, you automatically go, uh, yeah, um, sure, walk by. It's not until you stop and think that you realize what's actually happening. In school, they teach us, stop bullying. But it doesn't really help in real life. In some scenarios, there's that really brave and strong person to help. Most of the time, there isn't. In all those lucky times that someone was saved, those get on the news. They show the heroes. But then what happens to the ones that don't get saved? According to StopStreetHarassment.org, 37% of adults said that they wouldn't feel comfortable walking alone, even if it was during daytime and even if it was near their own home. And that was in America, one of the, one of the considerably safest places for this. Asian hate crimes, they're prejudiced. It's mockery. It's a game. What I'm trying to say is that this isn't necessary. So who cares if China was the first one to get COVID-19? Who cares if China is in Asia? The ones who blame us are just afraid. I'm just saying, if America would have gotten it first, hey, I'd be giving a speech about American hate crimes instead of Asian ones. Thank you. We'll now move on to Frank. Never you're ready. Since March 2020, Asian Americans have experienced an alarming increase in racial discrimination and racially moviated violence. Common commentators have attributed this distressing fact to the blame placed on China for causing the COVID-19 pandemic given that the virus was initially discovered in Wuhan. Some top U.S. government officials perpetuated this attitude by referring it to COVID-19 as the China virus or Kung flu. Because, of, because non-Asian people in the United States often, often conflict Asian subgroups, many people have directed their anti-Chinese sentiment towards people of other Asian heritage. Violence against Asian Americans has persisted in higher rates throughout the pandemic, mostly re most recently involving the shooting of multiple women leading to their deaths. What's even more sinister, in my opinion, is that Dr. Seuss was a racist against Asian Americans. Anti-Asian anti racism has been increased by 150% since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. But Asian hate racism is not limited to the COVID-19 pandemic. The 2003, 2003 SARS outbreak was sim similarly racialized, with Asian American people depicted as uniquely potent ve vectors. Indeed, the United States has a long history of anti-Asian racism grounded in xenophobia. Even during periods without a new infectious disease burden, such racism affects every age group, age group and plays out across innumerable settings. This discrimination has escalated 
in the face of the continued racialization of COVID-19. The current growing anti-racism movement in the United States has largely centered on anti-blackness, which has been recognized as embedded in, in situations such as law enforcement and prison industrial complex and the healthcare system. Given that the recent increase in anti-Asian sentiments occurred alongside with the highly publicized and protest murders of Black people, the Black slash Black and white binary may help explain why the recent surge in racism against Asian Americans has re re remained under underreported. Though the relative invisibility of Asian Americans that results from this racial deconomization is a long-standing issue, underreporting over the past year has been particularly shocking. Public awareness of crimes against Asian Americans increased in February 2021, only because of the boost from so social media and subsequent attention by national news outlets. This increased exposure has high highlighted the vicious nature of these crimes, and Asian Americans are left anxious about their lives of their loved ones and fearful of their own. This can all be a little scary, but we can stand up to stop Asian hate. Asians should not stay invisible anymore. As long as we stand up and we stop, as long as we stand up, we can stop Asian hate crimes. Thank you. Alrighty, thank you, Frank. <clears throat> we will uh, move on to uh, Teresa. Okay, is everyone ready? Yes, you can go whenever uh, you are ready. Okay. Bachar Rented Paki was well known in his San Francisco neighborhood for his hour-long walks each morning, a ritual that kept him vibrant and healthy during a year of the pandemic. An 84-year-old immigrant from Thailand, Rantopaki had recently received a coronavirus vaccine and was walking around in his neighborhood the morning of January 28th, his usual activity, when a man suddenly ran across the street and violently shoved him to the ground. And what San Francisco District Attorney Chesty Bowden called a horrific, senseless attack. Rontopake never regained consciousness after the deadly assault, and his daughter, Mathanis, recalled fighting back tears when she received that phone call. A police officer told her that they found him on the street, and he sustained a major brain injury. She said to reporters, he never will wake up again, she said and I'll never see my father again. Unfortunately, this isn't a one instance hit story. This is an instance that's happened thousands and thousands of times, but there has been an extreme spike of it because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So first, let's look at the causes of Asian hate crimes. Then we'll look at some recent data. Third, let's look at what we can all do to help fix this problem. First, let's move on to causes. It's clear that these are racially motivated hate crimes, and there's an evident provident and problematic link between the virus and Asian Americans. All over the media and news, Asian Americans are being the one blamed for the virus. Things such as called the Kung Fu virus, the Chinese virus, are being used to attack Asian Americans, and a pandemic has provided another excuse for people to target Asian Americans. However, this does not just magically appear because of the pandemic. It's only been brought closer to light and bullies attack who they think are the most vulnerable, which explains the spike in attack against the elderly. Now that we know why Asian hate crimes are happening, let's look at the recent data. There is shunning, slurs, and physical attacks against our elders. The NYPD reported that hate crimes motivated by anti-Asian sentiment jumped 1,900% in New York City just in 2020. And research by the organization Stop AAPI Hate 
revealed that nearly 3,800 incidents were reported by the course of roughly a year during the pandemic, over 3,000 crimes in just a year. It's a significantly higher number than last year's count of about 2,600 hate crimes nationwide over the span of five months. And according to Russell Jung, who's a professor of Asian American studies at San Francisco University, he told NBC that there is an evident correlation between racism and sexism, including a stereotype that Asian women are meek and subservient, which shows, which is shown by the increased attacks against Asian women. Over 503 incidents took place in 2021 alone. Verbal harassment and shunning were the most common types of discrimination, making up 68.1% and 20.5% of the reports. And a third most common category against Asian Americans is physical assault, which makes up about 11.1% of incidents. And more than a third of incidents occurred at businesses, which is a primary site of discrimination, while a court took place in public streets. You heard that right. They were willing to kill Asian Americans in front of everyone in the public streets. And a further examination of the submitted report showed that in many cases, verbal harassment that women received because they were Asian and also because they were women reflected the very intersection of racism and sexism. Now it's evident that the Asian American community is suffering and they need our help. So let's look at some solutions and what we can do. Such issues have been elevated to the point of presidents taking action. For example, President Joe Biden has tried to address the issue of anti-Asian attacks by trying to reference the violence in his first national primetime address and sign a memor memorandum. However, that's not always enough. We need to also support the immediate needs of AAPI groups. Let's listen to the immediately impacted, the communities on the ground, honor what they're asking for and what they're saying they need. Let's also sign the petitions and donate to victims and their families. And also share resources that you can offer to the victims, their families and other community members like language translation, mental health services, legal services, childcare or food assistance. Try to pitch in when you can. Also groups and organizations like the Asian American Resource Center have also volunteer and volunteering opportunities. That organization is also fundraising to help the victims' families with funeral and arrangement costs. See if they can volunteer with these kind of organizations and groups. Also speak out if you ever witness a hate crime or incident. If you ever happen to find yourself witnessing something, either speak out or intervene to defend the other person. It's like we're all watching a fire burning and picking up speed. Just looking at the fire and saying, oh look, there's a fire burning, but not doing anything is going to cause the entire building to burn down. We need to take action. We need to report the hate crime or incident. If it's a violent situation or safety is in danger, call 911 immediately. Look, hate crimes are underreported. Asian American community leaders are saying that reporting an incident you experience or witness can help bring greater awareness and strength to a chance that the perpetrator will be prosecuted and more awareness on the topic will be spread. Extreme hate crimes can be even reported both to the local police and be provided to tips by the FBI. Look, our elders are dying. They're being killed and murdered just for their own ethnicity. Let's take action and make sure that people like Vachar Watampaki didn't die in vain. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Teresa. We will now go on to Yu Ming. Uh, please correct me if I said that wrong. Um, it was correct. It was correct. Okay. Fellow humans, we need to stop Asian hate. You guys all heard the stats from the past past speakers. No matter if it was before or during the pandemic, Asian hate is unacceptable. 
Verbal and physical abuse towards Asians just because of their ethnicity is not only unacceptable, but it will make the situation worse. Scientists have already found very good evidence that COVID-19 might have started somewhere else with LiveScience.com, ScienceDaily.com, and BusinessInsider.com reporting about it. It's unbelievable that Asian Americans should be scared in the country we call home. Elderly Asians and many more types are being attacked. Therefore, the time is now and we must make a stand or we, our children and their children will face pure physical brutality from the country that we live in. We must show the world that we are united, strong, and will not tolerate Asian hate. As Benjamin Franklin said, we must indeed all hang together or most assuredly, we shall all hang separately, meaning that if we aren't united, we shall all face the dire consequences. All humans are equal and not a single person deserves to be physically or verbally abused because of the color of their skin. Even in my own peaceful town in New Jersey, I have been treated differently because of my skin color by both parents and students. I remember clearly a fellow student calling me racial slurs on school premises. Just weeks earlier, when waiting for my brother's dismissal at the elementary school, I saw a woman stare at me the entire time, her eyes filled with hatred. Then telling her young son about me and then pointing at me. I felt extremely angry and ashamed that I, a law-obeying, mask-wearing citizen who has done nothing wrong, has been hated by some random lady just because of my ethnicity. Whether this terrible situation we're in will be resolved or not depends on you. Every single one of you here has the power to decide of America, and I quote Daniel Dykin, chooses to erase us or include us, dismiss us or respect us, invisibilize us or see us, end quote. So I urge all of you here to tell everyone you know to stop Asian hate. From reporting on Asian hate crime them to organizations and stopping hate crimes. All of these things can help. Asian hate is happening as we speak. So please do these things. Together, we can stop Asian hate. Thank you. Thank you. We will move on to uh, Alex as our uh, last speaker. And whenever you are ready. Okay, so um, can everybody hear me clearly? Yes. Okay. Good evening, everyone. I'm Alex Me, and it's my pleasure to talk to you tonight. As we all know, the coronavirus has plagued our world for a year and a half now. It is acknowledged daily and on every single news channel as a top story each and every day. While we live in constant fear of waking up with fevers, loss of taste, and shortness of breath, the other problems of the world stand completely oblivious to us. One of these such issues targets the humble race of Asian Americans, the underdog of minorities, the quiet kid in the back of the classroom whose voice was never heard like that of a tiny, tiny bug in a prodigious bustling jungle. Since the virus hit, hate crimes towards Asian Americans drastically increased. In the past year, there have been over 3,800 anti-Asian racism situations. There are people out there on the streets chanting Wuhan virus and go back to China. In the past year, Asian children living in places like New York face daily physical and verbal abuse from their fellow classmates, friends, and even teachers. Why? Because they were Asian. In New York, an Asian man was blatantly beaten to death in a subway train in broad daylight. Why? Because he was Asian. 
On March 16th, 2021, eight people were killed in an Asian spa shooting initiated by a 21-year-old white man. Why? Because they were hardworking Asians trying to live a normal life in a land they failed to call home. Here in the United States, the proclaimed golden rule, treat others the way you would like to be treated, is taught in millions of schools across the country. Yet nowadays, so many of us seem to have forgotten it so quickly and we're indulging in hypocrisy as we unfairly shun Asian Americans. Unity is what makes America stronger and better. If we resort to racism and segregation, our great nation will undoubtedly collapse on these premises. Many believe that the sole reason for this increase is the irrational and narcissistic blaming of Asian Americans for bringing the Chinese virus to America. This is far from true. Racism against Asian Americans and immigrants have a long history, which makes it even harder to change. However, there is no use to moan and cry and gasp and sigh over our woes. What we need to do is act to change, to speak up. The entire society needs to speak up. Luckily, to stop this mystique, or at least try to stop it, several nonprofit organizations, such as Stop AAPI, also known as Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, hate, have set up to fight for justice. They give inspiring speeches, form protests, and help educate the crowd about why Asian hate is wrong. But despite their best efforts, their voice is still just louder than a mere squeak. We need the entire world to join and speak for this cause. This is simply just not enough. Now, I'd like to make an analogy. Most of us have probably read or at least heard of the famous Dr. Seuss book, Horton Hears a Who. It's about an elephant named Horton who discovers a tiny, tiny city called Hugo that is in danger. Horton agrees to help them find a new home, so he places Hugo on a flower and goes on a trip to seek assistance from his other jungle animal friends. However, because Hooville is so small, none of the jungle animals can hear the Hoos. They don't believe that the Hoos exist, so they won't help the Hoos. During the climax of the story, the animals are trying to destroy the flower. All the Hoos are screaming at the top of their lungs, yelling, we are here, we are here, we are here. And still, the animals don't hear them. In the end, it's a little boy from Hooville who screamed out an additional yelp. And that yelp is the one that gets through, and all the animals hear it. That yelp is what you need to be, what I need to be, and what today's society needs to be. In our reality, it's all the Asians that are saying, we are here, we are here, we are here, but where is everybody else? I'm asking you to join in. I'm asking you to be the little boy. America, the safe land of opportunity and liberty, Will this prideful nickname become a humiliating irony? Will our home become a toxic environment, rejecting a race that makes up half of the humans living on the earth? All I am asking you to do is help spread the word. Spread the word of the injustice Asian Americans face nowadays. I need you to be our Hortons. I think we can all be Hortons. Thank you. Thank you. Just give me a moment to uh, think. Um, everyone did a really good job, so I will get back to you when I have uh, decisions and all that fun stuff.
All righty. First off, before I uh, tell uh, the uh, results, everyone did a really, really good job and made it really, really hard for me to decide. Uh, oh, uh, could we save results for the award ceremony? You oh, can. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it's fine. You can just private message it to me so I can make the certificates, but I'd prefer for it to be released um, all at the same time. Okay, perfectly fine and understandable. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell you anything. <laughs> Okay, in the meantime, uh, for our second break, Yu Ming has actually prepared uh, an interactive activity for the guests, uh, so participants and spectators to do. It's called a Blook It, if I'm correct, Yu Ming. Blook It, basically like Kahoot, which all of us who, all of us have here have experienced, right? Since we all go to like, Google Meets and Zoom. I feel like some of the parents definitely have don't know what Kahoot is. No, gold mine is messed up. I'm too good at Latin, but everyone just keeps stealing my gold. It just sucks. Okay. Um. So you can. So basically, yeah, it's like Kahoot. Um. It's a questionnaire thing. Uh. You mean can explain it in detail, but basically he shares his screen. There's a code and a link. You can join the game using those. And um, yeah, tout, yeah. So the link is blookit.com slash play. And then and the code is on the Here's screen. the code, 695029. If you could paste it in the link. Okay, I'll paste it in the chat. Yeah, no, I'm not, so I'm just making sure you, uh... Oh, uh, yeah, I received it. Sorry, Frank. I I accidentally um deleted you. I'm really sorry. You can just rejoin. Is anyone else trying to join? Erica said in the chat that Erica's, oh, is Erica, you're already in, okay. Oh, there's two, no wait, yeah, Erica Z is on the screen, so I assumed <laughs> yeah, both of us are in here. So does anyone okay. else want to join before we start? I think that's it. Okay, so like, oh, oh okay. okay. So what else joined? It's exact. It's the exact same thing as Kahoot, but the thing is, you don't have to look at the host's screen for the um, questions. questions. There's also like a mini game in it. No, I did battle royale. You have to click faster than your opponent. Oh, okay. So then this is Kahoot. No, it's like a bracket. Ah, okay. No. I see. And at, every time you finish answering a question, you can just look at my screen to see who won. Yeah, and then to see who who's going up against who next. Okay, everyone starts with seven lies at the beginning. It's about COVID vocab. Just click on one of these.
and whoever is like white means that they have won. We only have two people left who haven't gotten a question wrong. Oh, that fast? Yeah, we done two questions, three now. And whoever has seven energy means they still, mm -hmm. oof, never mind. Oof, my brother is going down. That's so what? mean. No, it's it's yeah, don't be a jerk. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to check in on the breakout room. You guys have fun. Um, for those of you who would rather watch the Lincoln-Douglas debate, that's going on right now. I'm just guessing everything. <laughs> no, you can actually read the questions. That's what you're supposed to do. I know, but sometimes I don't know what the question means. Yeah, like patient zero and stuff, incubation period, are some of the less well-known vocabulary words.
The underdogs won. I'm freaking out. This game can get very competitive. <laughs> What the heck? Man, this is surprising. Not really. It's very interesting. Oscar's last life. Oof. Come on, people. We know you can do it. Stop reminding me that it's my last life. Sorry. Oscar. Oh, bro. Nice. Good job. Wait, what happens when there's only there's like an odd number of people left? Then what? If you guys see the the right corner, do you see the little icon? That that's a ghost icon. That means you're taking the average of the player's time and using it as a clone, since there's only three players. Erica will face off Oscar against Oscar. Good luck, you two. No other Erica. Come on, good luck, there people. Are only two, oh, the first three players. I definitely. I feel like I lost. Oh, really? Nice. Yay, Erica! By 0. 0.3 seconds! Nice job. GG. That's how these Can we do another one? <laughs> and that was so stressful. We'll do another one in later competitions, probably. Aww. That was even more stressful than I could do. That was you really more stressful win. than the competition. Yeah. No, like, it was so much more stressful than, like, the debate competition or the speech. Is. My heart was pounding much faster. I know, right? I mean, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, was at, I was at one health for three whole rounds and I survived. I mean, that's so one then I knocked you out, I think, yeah. right? Yeah. Stop reminding me. All right. Okay. Um, you mean, did you finish the book it? You mean did. He's not. He's just coming downstairs right now. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so you guys are welcome to head into the breakout room to watch the uh, Lincoln Douglas debate. Uh, because we'll have to wait until uh, for that to end before we have the award ceremony. Um, after the Lincoln Douglas, we'll have the uh, we'll take like a really, really quick break to finalize all the certificates and all the winners. Um, and then after that, we'll announce the rest of the winners. Um, during that time. If any of you guys are having trouble like getting into the breakout room, I can like assign you into it. <laughs> so just tell me. Well, could you do that for me? I'm Erica, not with a Z, just Erica. Okay, um, I will. Oh wait, hold on. I don't, oh. Sorry, I don't think I can assign it when the breakout rooms are in progress. You just have to join by yourself. Is it not in the, like, if you're on the app, it should be in the top left. It takes, like, if you click on, like, the join breakout room, it takes a few seconds for it to, like, register. Yeah, I know. I did it for Mr. Pape's class. It's just not popping up here. Huh. Okay. Um... Mr. Harrison, do you know any way to assign somebody to a breakout room that's already in progress?
no okay um I'm going to try to search it up. Wait, when I click to get in the uh, breakout room, it just kicks, it just doesn't let me get in. Nothing, like, nothing happens when I click on it. Um, you have to, are you on PC or mobile or like? Oh, uh, iPhone. Oh, uh, okay. If you click on it, it like takes a while. I had to click multiple times on my phone and like wait 30 seconds before it let me join. And then it just says like joining room one. No, like after I click join breakout room it, and then there's a big blue button that says join, I click on it and then it just, just a, it just like goes down and then nothing happens. Huh. I just don't have a button. When I try to like do the um, press the breakout room join thing, I had the same problem as I think it was the Sha, I think. Like when you press the join button and press join room one, then yes, nothing happens. Oh yeah, I'm on my mom's device. Xia is my mom's name, so yeah. Okay, um explain. Okay, I'm on like the Zoom Help Center. Um, but I don't know. Uh, oh, it's because, huh? That's because I'm not a host anymore. Uh, Derek, could you make me a host? That's why I was wondering like where all the functionality will end. I don't know where the breakout room thing. I mean, yeah, the, just just make just make me host. I don't know how to do that. Um, you, I think you go to participants, and then you click on my my name. It says like more, and then you click more and it says make host. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, who wants to go in? Erica, Yu Chen. Me. Uh, Yay! It's working. Yeah, I'll go. Who in. said? Who said me? Uh, can I go in too? Okay, uh, Eric. Uh, but also, when's the award ceremony? Uh, the award ceremony will be after the Lincoln Douglas debate ends. But when's will that like approximately be? Um, I'd say in like twenty minutes. Okay. Yeah, so we're almost done. Um, Erica Z, I it says you are like. You're in room one. You just haven't joined. Like, I already assigned you to it, apparently. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I'll see if I can find it. Yeah, okay. I think she got in. Um, does anybody else want to? watch if not i can put on some music out here Jalen, you want to go in yeah okay um, yeah go ahead okay i'm gonna put on some music then uh, for the rest of you guys, just message me in the chat if you want to, like, if you, like, can't get into the breakout room and you want me to assign you there. Um, let me think. Okay. I'll also put up the 
QR code for our PayPal again. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, I think, okay, so I have the winners, but I'm finalizing one of the certificates. So uh, if you cut, if you guys could just be like, give me like a minute, be a little patient with me. Thank you.
Okay, I'm so sorry. That took so long. Um, okay, but I have finalized uh, the stuff for the award ceremony. Um, I think letting Mr. Harrison, per, uh, I think letting Mr. Harrison uh, present the winners is the best choice. Um, Mr. Harrison, were you given the list of winners? No, I was not. Actually, I would rather not. <laughs> this is no. probably the, the most dreadful task. Uh, it's really tough. Um, you know, I've been listening to the, the speech section tonight. Everybody did such a wonderful job. I don't envy the job our judge had. Why don't we give, give the judges the <laughs> honor to, to announce that? Okay. Um, well, I can. I didn't have the list. But... Okay. Uh, well, we can go in order. So Public Forum Elementary uh, is, uh, I think, Douglas, you judged that? Yes. Okay. So Public Forum Elementary is i think you already announced the winner for this actually that is correct the uh negative had won this debate justin chen and yu chen yang 
So a round of applause for them silently, I think, because everybody's mics are off. Um, and then I think Steven, you judged the uh, public forum high school. So if you That's would like true. to announce that. Yeah, so I actually have to open up chat where I message because I have the memory of a goldfish. So the winner is the affirmative, which was Kevin and Michelle. Another silent round of applause. <laughs> um, yes, silent clapping. Uh, and then I think is the speeches. So that's back to uh, Douglas. Sorry, uh, the uh, winner of uh, the speeches was Alex. And uh, then in second place, uh, Teresa. And then Frank also won, I think, his own. Uh, yes, he Frank also won his own uh, section, his uh, age group. So yes, insert more silent clapping. Um, and then lastly, I think is Lincoln Douglas. Yeah, so all these decisions were so hard um, between Public Forum and Lincoln Douglas. But Lincoln Douglas, it came down to like the wire, and it was Kevin who ended up scraping through. All right, okay. Um, so those were the winners for today's uh, event. Of course, uh, I think like Harrison said earlier, everyone is winners. Um, you know, I like, I really enjoyed seeing all of the speeches and the debates. And like, I was switching back and forth between the rooms a lot. So I wasn't there for the like the whole thing. But the snippets that I heard were really in, you know, interesting. And it made me want to stay there and listen. Uh, it was it was a very enjoyable experience. And I hope it that was the same for all of our spectators and participants as well. Um, for the winners, I will email you a copy of the certificate uh, later. Um, I have all of your, email, your emails. In addition, each winner uh, has, uh, I will, uh, has won an Amazon gift card of $15. So congrats for that. Hopefully you can buy something to entertain yourself with. Um, but yes, uh, Mr. Harrison, would you like to say something? I was just going to say that uh, we're uh, very grateful uh, for two of our judges tonight. And uh, I hope that in the future we can invite them to come back, share their own experience, either as a debater um, or as a coach. And you guys have gone through a lot. And those are the future generation of uh, debaters, uh, speakers that uh, you were able to coach or advise tonight. So we're really great, grateful for your time. All right, well, it's, uh, it's a very enjoyable night. And Rosalind, do you have any announcement for, uh, I don't know whether you have put up the uh, Discord uh, link or? Ooh, yes, I will. Michelle, do you have the join link? Could you get that? Uh, yeah, I have it. Okay. Um, also, uh, usually our schedule for competitions is every three or four weeks we host one, but with uh, final exam season, you know, AP exams, uh, like school is ending, uh, we've decided that the organization will take a temporary break during this time. If you want updates, you can join our Discord server. We'll be active in there and we'll announce. We always remind people whenever there's meetings um, and post the signups for future events and the Zoom links as well. Uh, so if you're interested in keeping up to date with the organization, I really suggest joining the Discord. Um, we also have an Instagram. I will post, okay, Instagram. 
the username is the ISSDA. Uh, I posted that in the chat for everyone to see. Uh, we post the posters there and the links. So you can use that as, an, as another way to keep up to date. I think there's also um, Harrison, uh, Mr. Harrison sends stuff in WeChat groups uh, to keep you guys updated. Um, we don't have a definite date for when we will return, but uh, it won't be very long. I think we'll be back by at the latest mid-June. Um, but yeah, until then, uh, some of you are frequent meeting attenders, uh, outside, even outside of the executive circle. Um, so meetings will be less often, but I will send out a reminder every time we have meetings. If you're interested in joining, again, the Discord server is in the chat. Um, the Instagram is in the chat. The PayPal link is also in the chat. Thank you, Teresa. Um, yes. I think that's it for me. Um, All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. Have a great night. Yeah. See I you next time. Really See you next time. Thank you so much yeah. for coming. Thank Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.